Uh, we move now to a grassroots panel. And um, we've said a few times today, the European Movement is a grassroots organisation, movement of people, and we are supported by 12,000 members up and down the UK, 123 local groups, um, and many more uh, supporters uh, online and in our communities. Uh, Many of you will have wanted to get out on the streets this year and have not been able to because of COVID, but in the years preceding, uh, you've been kind of out on the streets campaigning tirelessly. Um, and uh, to talk about those experiences and where we go next, uh, we have four uh, fantastic campaigners here to, to talk to us about what it's like out on the front line. So uh, we are joined by Hazel Underwood, who's going to chair the panel, uh, by Mark Lazarevich from uh, in, uh, European Movement in Scotland, by Ian Collard from Oxford and Louise Brown from the North East. Uh, I look forward to what you're going to tell us. Thank you very much, Anna. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, nice to see you all, even if not in person. Um, so campaigning obviously has been quite a different thing this year or sort of almost non-existent. Um, obviously, this time that last year was when the Euro Cafe initiative was really just about to take off um, and there was Euro Cafes popping up all around the country and then we had the lockdown and everything had to stop like that. So it was a real shame. Hopefully, maybe this year they can start going again. But um, if I first perhaps ask Louise... I know you've been very busy up in the North East, um, especially with the whole Sunderland um, Nissan plant issue. I mean, what have you been doing up there? Um, yeah, so you might have seen, you know, everyone's been talking about unity. And I guess that it, well, well, when we were still allowed to protest, that's, you know, we decided, we know a lot of Nissan workers were lied to. They got targeted with vote leave saying, you know, don't worry, and Nissan's not going to close, which wasn't actually what they said. So we thought, let's just stop all of this rivalry of who voted what. And we got out there and, you know, saying solidarity with them. Uh, you know, you were lied to. We need a good deal. So you stay open. Um, you know, not all Remainers were happy that we did that. Um, but it did get a lot of press attention and it also meant we could slide some of our other messages in there, which, you know, we got quite worldwide press attention for doing stuff like that. So what else would would give you that? So we kind of had to run with that. Yeah, excellent. Um, did, did you find that it was um, quite easy to target because obviously you had that one issue? Um, was, did you get a lot of support from the local pop, you know, the local workers by doing that? Yeah, I mean, in terms of tips, I would for that one we did. It, so I'm part of Northeast for Europe, but for things like that, we we just, you know, I might be part of Northeast for Europe, but I'm also a concerned local resident because I grew up around there. So we can we build ourselves as just local concerned residents, and it meant that people would read our story that wouldn't have done and we got in the express and the mail and got right outside our bubble whereas if we would build ourselves as an eu group people just wouldn't have read it and it wouldn't have got in half of the the papers that it did so that's yes. kind of how we tackled it and we had a lot of support from the community because they weren't put off but from from that label yeah yeah so it's almost good to step away from that kind of thing and and yeah rebrand yourselves as something else yeah. i guess um, Mark, what, what's been going on in Scotland at the moment? What, what are your main issues and main things that you might be campaigning about at the moment? Yes, well, good afternoon. Well, obviously, because we're a national movement in, in Scotland, we've got a lot of groups throughout the country who are doing their own things in different ways. And like, uh, well, like everyone in the rest of the UK, we've obviously been heavily restricted to what can happen uh, on the streets and meeting the public directly over the last year but people have been very active in the local groups and that's involved everything from online events online campaigning uh, and also focusing on ways in ensuring we get the pro-european message across uh, uh, at, at scottish level as well i mean for example at the moment obviously as uh, people will know we've got scottish parliament elections in a few weeks time and we produced a set of policy papers effectively a manifesto uh, in which we call for various actions to be taken, which can ensure that Scotland can stay closer to Europe, whatever happens for Scotland in the future in terms of its relationship with the UK, that's another question. But whatever happens, we've got manifesto, we've asked all the parties to look, look at that, to consider it. And so we're, you know, we're trying to get a message over that level. 
Equally at local level, people are involved in uh, speaking with local uh, people on the streets where they can, uh, and uh, uh, also uh, being active in working with European citizens in Scotland, who, like in the rest of the country, obviously are in a very difficult position in many cases because of the isolation that they have at the moment, particularly in the more remote areas. So lots going on, and people are very keen to do things and to you know, keep stressing the message that Scotland is a European nation, as uh, um, the UK itself, of course, is really, uh, but there's a strong support for uh, the EU in Scotland, and we uh, want to keep giving voice to that. Is there anything in particular you would say as a sort of a top tip? What do you think has worked best in terms of campaigning when you're trying to reach people? Well, it's obviously it's different from area to to area, uh, but I think one of the key things is uh, when there are issues that come up, um, is to make sure that but raise a European issue, but you put that uh, European dimension at the centre of the public debate. So, for example, when the issue about Erasmus uh, became more and more uh, high profile, we've been very heavily involved in that, working with some universities and other organisations. I think we, uh, Edinburgh and Glasgow universities, for example, have the two highest uh, rates of participation in Erasmus across the UK, and obviously Erasmus is more than just universities, so we've been active uh, in, in that. Uh, and um, I think it's a question of both, you know, setting the agenda, but also responding to issues as they come up the agenda as well. We've, we were, I think, managed to do that. Yeah, thank you. Um, so speaking of Erasmus, um, Ian, I believe um, you are working on something linked to Erasmus at the moment, a current campaign. Is that right? A, a, a beautiful segue in there, Hazel. Um, anybody would think you'd been involved with it. Uh, yeah, um, we've um, as, as, there's a part of Erasmus which uh, affects uh, three to 19 year olds. So it affects uh, children called e-twinning. And it's basically a, a platform that enables people to uh, undertake projects with people from across Europe and beyond. You don't have to be a, uh, a member of a European Union country to be involved. Uh, and we got to know about this uh, through a, uh, a, a teacher in Coventry had started it. Um, a campaign to save e-twinning because the government in getting rid of Erasmus threw the baby out to, uh, with the bathwater and, and got rid of e-twinning as well. Uh, years and years of work were just lost and thrown away. Uh, then through your good offices as well, Hazel, um, the, the, the Oxford um, region got involved and we now have a, a, a campaign running which hopefully, well there's a petition that's already live and um, hopefully somebody will maybe put it in the in, in, in a chat or put it on screen before we finish um, and hopefully the uh, European movement are going to be getting behind that uh, in the in the coming week and we're certainly hoping uh, to make this it's a positive campaign that's the thing that we want to stress that it, it, it's positive it's not saying what we've lost it's saying what we can achieve because we can rejoin e-twinning. We don't have to be a member of the EU and it will mean greater cooperation with our European or with our European neighbours and obviously their children, so to speak. Um, so, Louise, going forward, I mean, what have you got planned in terms of, you know, what you might do over the next weeks, months, years? Yeah. Even? Well, we can't wait to get back out there. So, you know, like a lot some of the groups have already people have already discussed there is this big five-day protest going on on the 23rd of june because we're hoping it, we plan something for june the restrictions hopefully will have will have eased um so you know that's like we've got this 13 cities involved with steve bray and sodom and it, again he is i was just on a conference call with with him and grassroots last night and that he's very much that he wants different groups to come together it, it doesn't just want it to be remain as he wants all groups black lives matters x r but also whatever you voted and come under a banner of like we demand better you know whatever you voted we demand better so again another unifying message so and we've decided to have one in newcastle as well as the other 12 cities um but also before that we you know we, we've been doing online events as well 
and we did one for um, when Brexit Day happened on New Year's Eve. And just like maybe a top tip is just because it's, you know, like this is an online event, but and you advertised it, which is brilliant. But I think sometimes the local group, you think, oh, it's online, no newspapers, local newspapers going to be interested in it. But actually lots of newspapers picked it up and probably because there's not much, you know, there's not much other stories going on sometimes because of COVID. Um, so that's that would be one of my tips. And we're going to do that again for Europe Day, just because we're not sure what the restrictions are going to be, you know. So keep going yeah. to the online events, but we're heading for the June five day ones and, you know, take it from there, really. OK, um, Mark, are there any particular areas that your groups do you think will be looking to campaign in or the, what themes will they be campaigning on, do you think, over the next few months? Well, over the next few weeks, we'll be focusing on trying to make sure that Europe, well, the pro-European ad, uh, agenda is uh, uh, up there in the uh, debate about the Scottish Parliament. We, we want to uh, encourage all parties, all candidates to uh, uh, support as pro-European position as they can. Obviously, some are more likely than others, but you know we're working with where they want to try and get message over. That'll be a focus, I'm sure. I, well, I know is happening over the next few weeks. Um, and we're doing it in some of the traditional ways in which you try and uh, raise issues in campaigns, but also in other more budgetary ways as well. For example, well, just after the elections, we're going to be organising a series of uh, Euro walks, uh, social distance ways of uh, encouraging people to go around the local community and see in their city, their town, the very many connections there are with Europe now, both uh, current and historical. And that's something which you can do uh, in the open air, which we're doing on um, on Europe Day uh, in May as well. So there's that kind of activity which we can do. And obviously, as we uh, perhaps lock down restrictions, easier, there's more we can do there. Uh, and uh, so it's a combination of trying to keep open the, well, the, the links, emphasise a message that we want to maintain and develop our existing links, and obviously at the same time to have an influence uh, in the elections coming up to try and ensure that the European message is uh, uh, kept as high profile as we can. I like the idea of those Euro walks. That's, that's a great idea, actually. Yeah, I like that. Um, um, Ian, back to you. <laughs> um, have you got any plans for Europe Day at all with your group? That's coming um, up on the 5th or the 9th of it, May, isn't it? On Europe Day. I think um, earlier on in the, uh, in, in the uh, event, you probably heard um, from, um, uh, from Helen Wales uh, about a... a, a an, a project to create a new story uh, for our relationship with Europe, and I think there's a, we're hopefully going to hold a a, a launch event in the week, uh, either on the day or in the week after, to say that you know um, we should be working for a, a new relationship with Europe, and and here's the the story that we have to tell. So I think that's probably the thing for sort of Europe Day. Um, and of course, we will be keeping going as well on on the other campaign that we've been running, which is to highlight the threat to to, to human rights, especially uh, with the Conservatives now in the Council of Europe, who are aligning aligning themselves with literally the most extreme right parties on the continent. Uh, they're in the same group as Swedish Democrats, who come out of the fascist movement in the 1940s, uh, and uh, uh, the AfD in Germany. And uh, we want to, to highlight to people that this is a real threat to, um, to human rights in this country, which, of course, many, and it has to be said, unfortunately, especially within the, the, uh, the, the governing party, do not like. So that's something else we're going to be focusing on. Great idea. Yeah. Um, have any of the groups done anything on twinning? So, um, you know, we have town twinning. Um, and my idea is that we should make sure they are revived if they're not already in existence or, you know, maybe attract trying to attract younger people to them. Um, is that anything you've done up, up in the northeast, Louise? Um, we, we had a sister group called Angels for Europe who worked slightly higher up in Northumberland and they did a lot of twinning. And I know they had um, they had some people, some towns from France came over to Hexham. And so now the, the, this group, that group, Angels for Europe, has amalgamated with Northeast for Europe. So it's definitely something we're gonna we were massively inspired by. I mean, they had like 
dances together and all sorts and we, we're definitely going to keep that up once obviously it's when, when when we can actually travel yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I it doesn't work so, so well virtually does, does it but, no, uh, what, what, things works, yeah <laughs> Mark, do you have the same in Scotland? Have you well, got it's, quite interesting. it's quite interesting. I mean, one of our uh, webinars, very uh, uh, one of our earliest web webinars in the current uh, uh, situation, was looking at ways in which we can practically keep open and develop links between Scotland and Europe, and a whole list of areas where there could be cooperation. Uh, and one of the things raised by it was actually was actually um, uh, twinning, uh, and that's something which uh, I don't think we're doing anything specifically in the moment but it's certainly something we want to encourage uh, happen and encourage more to happen but i think we looked at you know we looked at various ways in which there's all sorts of links that, that are there I mean, we did an event with the uh, estonian and latvian consuls here in, in scotland uh looking at those countries and that was informative for our members but also talking about links as well and we know i've for example a couple of uh, business people from uh, i think estonia happen to make contact with people in scotland who are in one of the calls so you know whatever ways you can stimulate links in which i didn't really expect it in these kind of events because we always try and make sure when we're doing events we try and look at you know, what does this mean in practice how can we do something out of it uh, so i think the idea of you know, every type of link you know from the smallest community to the largest organization that's a way of maintaining our European profile, our European connection, and you're keeping us part of the European mainstream at a time when some people want to cut us off from that. Yeah. Um, Ian, back to you. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm thinking when we're talking about campaigning, I think it's quite important that we do look towards the future generations of voters, especially those who were under 18 when the referendum happened and were unable to vote. Um, what do you think are the best ways that we can try and target young people in particular to try and, you know, bring open their eyes to the European movement and beyond? God, that was a curveball, wasn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, you know, in, in, in honesty, that's, that's something that's giving us uh, quite a problem. I'll be honest with you. If, if if I had a magical solution, I'd have probably patented it and sold it to you by now. Uh, we, we we live in, in one of the great, uh, you know, we're based in one of the great university towns of the world, um, and 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 yet it is still difficult to get young people involved. Um, I think. I think, and, and I'm going to do a politician's answer by moving it slightly because I think it's another important thing that we can do. I don't think we should just focus on young people. I think we should also focus on those who are most affected, which is very often the European residents uh, of, of our towns. And Oxford, again, is a hugely diverse city. Um, and we've been running uh, campaigns to, to remind them that they need to uh, have registered for you know permanent residency etc by the June deadline trying to get them to encourage them to come out and vote so I don't think it's just about young people um, you, you might not like the answer but I think there's a danger that if we just focus on 18 to 25 year olds who historically have got the reputation for not coming out and voting we could be putting in a lot of effort into the groups that actually are not going to do are not going to deliver when it matters. That's not um, being uh, sort of defeatist, but it is maybe being uh, practical. Final comment: the Democrats did it in America, and maybe we've got to look exactly at how they did it. But at the moment, no, I don't have the answer. Louise, um, if you had sort of one top tip on future campaigning for other groups, what would it be? Um, I, I would probably say even if you're campaigning on a local issue, and someone else told me this tip, it's not, I didn't make it up, um, is basically sometime when we're, again, when we're actually allowed to travel, is it's often better to still take, even if it's a local issue, to take it to London. Um, because you know, there's just you just get a lot more press coverage, even from your own local press. Like, oh, it must be a massive issue if you've gone down to Westminster with a placard or whatever, and it just gives the story a lot more gravitas. And that was some advice that I was given 
and I have found that to be to be very true. So even if it's on a very, I think I, I went down once. Obviously, I've done the Nissan stuff, but I went down about how the northeast is going to lose the most funding from Brexit or be the worst from Brexit, and we took it outside uh, Houses of Parliament and it just became a much bigger story because we'd taken it to London even though it was a story about the North East which sounds mad but I, I would, uh, it, it, it's something that definitely works once we can you know travel yeah if you want to trip to London it's a good excuse anyway yeah. <laughs> and Mark what about you what, what would your top tip be for uh, campaigning or engaging with people in your local area it's, uh, it's, it's tried to say it depends on area to area, clear, if it's an issue. Um, but I, I think that, uh, you know, it's actually quite important to be, uh, you know, not not to be shy of being pro-European. And now I know it's probably easier for me to say that in, the, you know, in a in a country where you know, 62% uh, voted uh, uh, to remain and, as it, as it happens, living, it's talking to you now from a constituency, which is almost 80% uh, remain. And, I, you know, I, I know it's easier for me to say, but maybe in some places. But I think that there's people you know, against the EU, uh, the EU everywhere in the UK. Uh, uh, so it's, it's true, uh, what I'm saying is true everywhere. But it's important to be positive, not to be apologetic about being pro-European. At the end of the day, uh, if our ambition is for uh, Scotland or the UK, or Scotland as part of the UK, or whatever, to rejoin the uh, EU. We have to be positive about that. And so my tip, my message is uh, not to be uh, shy about being pro-European. Yeah, OK, that's great. Ian, what about your top tip? Yeah, uh, my, my, my top tip is, uh, is to those branches that are maybe smaller now than they were a few years ago, or even a few months ago. Um, when I set out campaigning uh, 25 years ago now, uh, it, it probably was, somebody said to me, because I was saying, look, you know, there's, there's, there's so few of us. And they said, do what you can with the resources available. And they were talking about leafleting at the time, etc. And they said, if you've got enough to deliver 200 leaflets, deliver 200 leaflets, but always ask for volunteers. And that would be my top tip to every group that's maybe got only two or three uh, committed activists. It's do what you can, but at every opportunity, ask for volunteers, ask for help. It's amazing how quickly it can grow. And suddenly you've got a snowball effect and you're able to reach out far wider. That's great. Thank you. That's, I think that's uh, lots of top tips for us to take away. Um, I don't actually know how whether we're running behind or on time or not. Um, I can't see the time. Um, but um, has anyone got anything else that they would like to add? No, um, that's great. Well, thank you everybody for your time. Um, thank you for coming. Thank you for thank you. To the European Movement for organising this. And for those of you who haven't checked out the e-twinning petition yet, please do, please do go and look at it sign it and share it with all of your friends and family um that would be great i think oh yeah it's scrolling below below the screen now so yes thank you very much